Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Oh, what is it? It's Pokemon and Nene, Chief Hitter of Disabled Game Movies here. To kick off Sci-Fi's fall season, we reviewed the Civilization series' love letter to the sci-fi genre. Can this game kick off the season with a high score? Or should this game be left behind on air? And without further ado, let's find out. The Civilization series is hailed as one of the grandfathers of the strategy genre. Its heritage predates the legendary Dune 2. The first game in the series was released in September 1991. Since then, the series has been hailed as one of the best turn-based strategy games on the market. This particular title was originally released exclusively for the Windows PC on the 24th of October 2014. The game revolves an event called The Great Mistake a thermonuclear war as the various nations carry out nuclear strikes against one another in a tit-for-tat basis. This is known as the Mutually Assured Destruction Doctrine. As a result of this, the excess nuclear radiation has once again accelerated global warming, stripping Earth of over 75% of its natural resource supply. So humanity takes to the stars to find new planets suitable for habitation for a fresh start. You take control of a collection of nations known as sponsors and compete with others for planetary domination, therefore carving out a whole new chapter for humanity. The accessibility scores are as follows. To kick off proceedings, visibility game in eight. In this game, there are no colorblind modes in its interface, however, there is very little need for one. If you move your mouse cursor over any unit icon, a tooltip will appear informing you of what type of unit this is and which sponsor is controlling that unit. Also, on a turn-based strategy game, you have as much time as you need to think through your moves as you control the game's pacing. So this game is quite accessible for a player with visual impairments. However, more customization options over which color each faction is under would make this game a lot more accessible. Next up on the agenda, on ability given 9.5. In this game, all dialogue is text-based. Even spoken dialogue from your advisor and other leaders are subtitled. However, font customization options can be very beneficial that way a player with a hearing impairment can read what's being said without running the risk of him or her getting any edge frame while reading them. So a player with a hearing impairment will be able to play this game with no issues. However, font customization options can make this game more accessible. Ability 10. The game is controlled by the mouse. Left click selects units, right click issues orders. When a unit is selected and the right mouse button is held, the distance that that particular unit can move in a single turn is represented by a border. Go outside that border, it will take multiple turns for the unit to reach its destination. The amount of turns it will take is noted by the number on top of the tile you want to move to, and will be displayed before you release the rightmost button to confirm the order. Any other action in the game can be done through traditional menus. However, controller support would make this game a lot easier to play. Turn-based strategy games are ideal candidates for strategy games with controller support. Unless, by certainly by no means least, gameplay gives it 10.5. Although for access cut corners when developing this game, the majority of mechanics and features are carbon copies from its predecessor, Civilization V. The experience you get while playing this game is still excellent. The graphics are by far superior when in contrast with the latest edition of the franchise Civilization VI. The diverse roster of leaders to choose from, especially with the Rising Tide expansion, what really makes this game stand out to the crowd is aquatic cities. You can build a city and win an ocean tile, however ocean cities doesn't gather culture. And the only way for a city's territory to expand is to physically move the city from tile to tile. In summary, Civilization Beyond Earth is an excellent spin-off to the Civilization series. 
Its sci-fi setting is like a breath of fresh air, when in contrast to the historically inspired entries of the series, it plays different, looks different, and feels different. As I have said before, graphically, the game looks completely different from other entries of the series, apart from 5. The battles in this game looks a lot more realistic as each military unit feels like an army. The complete version of the game is under £20, which includes the base game, the Rising Tide expansion and the Exoplanet map pack, which adds even more replayability to a very long game. In terms of system requirements, it does not require a lot of firepower in your PC to run this game. If you can run Sonic Origins, you'll be able to run this game on high or ultra settings at a 1080p resolution. If you are a sci-fi enthusiast who's looking for a cheap, low-spec friendly strategy game to play on the run-up to the Christmas period, this game is highly recommended. And the overall score is a highly respectable 95%. This is Party Commander 1990 Chief Editor of the Sailor Union News signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next review.